Hello, we're back with another prop making video tutorial. This week I've been inspired by the Fortnite game. At the moment they've got a Marvel season on and they've recently added the character Blade. So I'm going to be making not something from the game specifically, rather the first Blade movie. I'm going to be making his sword, the Sword of the Daywalker. So before I get started, make sure you've subscribed to this channel, hit the little notification bell and given this video a thumbs up. Done that? Better of. Right, let's get cracking. So after you've got your template printed out, you're going to use some 2mm craft foam to wrap your handle in. This isn't the best angle. Surely I didn't film it all like this, did I? Right, here's my heat gun and uh, a blank bit of foam with my hand out of shot. I can't believe I've done this. Okay, I'm starting again. Right. Take two. So the templates, once you're printing them out, make sure that the little bit at the top there matches up to real life measurements. These are designed to be printed on A4 paper, so you've got a bit at the top for centimeter and inch measurements to make sure you're printing them to the correct size. This is a piece of wood I'm using for the blade. It's got a beveled edge and it is 35 inches long. And that goes into the handle too. You're gonna need two of these. And what I did was I taped them together using nine pieces of tape to make sure they're nice and straight. And once they're all taped together, I'm gonna to use a sharp knife to cut one side only. And that'll just flap open. And I've got a lolly stick and a scrap piece of cardboard and some Gorilla two-part epoxy. This is six minute epoxy, although it takes longer than six minutes to cure. You just squirt that out in equal parts and then make sure you thoroughly mix it together. If you don't mix it properly, it won't cure. You've got plenty of time to do this because like I said, six minutes is really generous. It takes more than double that I find. So make sure you get that thoroughly mixed together and then using that lolly stick, you're gonna smear that across the underside of those blades there, only on one side. Just make sure it's nice and thin, you don't want it oozing out. Once you cover the whole thing, just fold that back over and use some more tape that you've already conveniently cut off to tape those back up. And then you're gonna put that to one side to dry. Make sure you keep that piece of cardboard with the lolly stick on it as well. Right, moving on to the handle. This is a piece of PVC pipe. I'm first gonna rough that up with some sandpaper to help the glue stick to it. Do that as well to the thicker piece of pipe that's gonna be the top of the handle. Then we're gonna use some two millimeter craft foam to wrap that in. I'm gonna heat gun that first to make sure it's nice and flexible. And I'm just gonna roll that up on itself, nice and tight to help that curve around the handle. And then hot glue just down one line of the, uh, of the handle there and then put that onto the craft foam. Wait for that to fully set before you then go wrapping that round to finish it off. So I'm marking where the ends are with the scissors. They're gonna cut that with a sharp knife. Now it should be a perfect fit. Some more hot glue. And then wrap that round. Just using your fingers to push those edges together. If you want to tape it in place, you can. And then trim any excess off with some scissors. Do the exact same thing for that thicker part that goes on the top of the handle as well. So I've roughed that up, wrapped that, and I'm using another piece of foam that's the same width to go on the inside because that's too loose to fit around that. So this is just one layer thick. Wrap that round, glued into place. and then that will now fit nice and snug on the top of the handle. Depending on the thickness of your pipe, you may need more than one layer of foam, or if the foam's too thick, wrap it in some tape instead. So now that's done, just gonna put that up to the template, make sure it's all the correct size. Just below that wider bit at the top there, it's gonna, it bevels down, it doesn't, doesn't drop down at a sharp 90 degree angle like it does, it bevels down, so I'm gonna take a piece of eight mil thick foam. This is just a bit of floor mat. I'm gonna cut the texture off the back and then cut a bevel down one side. And then where that bevel meets the flat edge, I'm gonna cut that again to give me like a triangle profile piece of foam that I'm gonna wrap around to then have that thicker piece bevel down into the thinner piece of the handle. 
just a tiny bit of glue on one edge just to get that stuck down to get that started and I'm not taping this into place I want it to be nice and flush I'm going to hold that into place with my hands and do just a tiny bit at a time like maybe an inch at a, at a time just to get that nice and straight using a rasp file now to rough up the end of a piece of pipe same thickness as the one I use for the handle that's just to sharpen that up so I can use that to cut a piece of foam out that's going to plug the end of the handle push that bit out of a pencil and then that is just glued into place make sure it's nice and flat I did that by pushing it down onto the end of the table to get that flush with the bottom of the pipe the ends now need to be plugged off as well to make it look nice and pretty I'm gonna do that with some craft foam just lots of glue on the end that's the top of the handle there once that's set trim that with some scissors and do the exact same thing with the bottom bit of glue on the bottom press that down onto the craft foam make sure it's fully set before you try trimming this or you're going to just gunge up your scissors and then trim that off so now I'm adding the rings that go around the handle these are just strips I've cut out of 2 mil craft foam and they're just glued into place using the template as a reference to make sure I get them all in the right place it's always handy to keep that template on hand just so you can make sure you're getting everything right just take your time with these to make sure you get them nice and straight and make sure you get the ends properly stuck down otherwise when you heat seal it later all the ends will lift up so now doing the bit that's actually the switch in the film that makes the uh, that stops the blade from sticking out to cut your hands off and that's done in the same way just using strips of 2 mil foam and they're just stuck on take your time with these you've got to get the spacing right there's not a lot of room there for, for both of them and I'm just curling the end of a piece of foam now and that's then glued into place as well and this is the little switch assembly done now offering that up to the template to make sure I've got it all in the right place and it's about this time that I realized I actually haven't that switch is supposed to go right at the top and I've gone and glued it in where the uh, symbol is supposed to be painted on so I'm gonna have to peel all that off again can't believe I've messed this up twice now what an absolute idiot some motherfuckers are always trying to ice skate up here right so now gluing on another one in the correct place so this is done exactly the same way but glue it on in the correct place this time using those templates as a reference now using a wood burning tool to put in the uh, grooves where the blades would actually pop out as you see in the film this one doesn't have poppy outy blades but it's going to have the grooves there anyway so now everything is actually in the right place last thing to do is to cut a hole in the end where the blade will go in Right, to paint this I've taken a kitchen roll tube, cut the end to make it narrow and stuck that in the end and then this will slide over a bottle to keep it held upright and I've used a heat gun to then seal the whole thing. I'm using matte black spray paint to paint the whole thing black. While that's drying I'm going to cut out some rectangles out of some more 10mm thick EVA foam and this is going to make a display stand. I'm going to trim a piece down a bit narrower. This is for the actual bits that hold the sword up. Now using the blade to make an indentation on those bits so I know how wide to cut out the part of the blade's going to slot into. Once I've done one I trace that onto the next one so they're both the same and these are then glued into place. I cut the ends off of those to make the corners beveled I'm then going to use those little triangles that I cut out to glue in as well. This helps hold them up straight and also looks pretty cool too. Heat sealing the whole thing before I use some paint. This is raw sienna. Just do one coat of this. I don't go for full coverage on this. I let some of that grey show through to try and give it some, some texture to it. While that's drying, when I get to painting the handle, I'm using some silver paint for this. This is high viscosity paint. It's quite thick, so you need to use less layers of it. Just being very careful not to go on any of the black areas that I don't want silver using a flat ended brush 
use a heat gun gently just to speed up the drying on that and then put that to one side on that bottle to dry while that is drying use some burnt umber now to go over that stand not going for full coverage again i want the brush strokes to show through because they're going to look like wood grain and then while that's drying add a second coat of the silver back to the stand using some raw umber now gradually getting darker and darker again not going for full coverage we want a wood grain effect on this so now those rings have got two coats of silver i'm using the same paint but a very fine tipped brush now to add those symbols to the top and bottom of the handle and these go on the front and the back just take your time with these because if you mess up it's really hard to, to fix it without having to mask off all those silver bits to spray some more black on so i'm using that template to make sure i get them right and get the sizing and spacing correct I wasn't going for 100% accuracy because no one other than a hardcore blade fan would really notice. Just as long as it was close enough, I was happy with it. Both the handle and the stand was covered in some clear automotive lacquer. Now onto the blade. Now that lolly stick and cardboard is fully cured, so I know the blade is cured too, so I peeled off the tape and I'm gonna cut out the sword tip template. This was then traced around onto the blade and cut out with a very sharp knife. You could of course use a saw for this, but my coping saw skills aren't as good as my knife skills. This is then sanded down with that rasp file again. And also any glue that seeps through the edges is also knocked back with that same file. I now need to trim the end to make sure the handle can fit in. So it's just as simple as cutting that down using a saw first of all to cut in as far as you need to go and then a knife or a saw, whichever you prefer, to trim that down to size. The ends of this are then rounded off with a rasp file for a tighter fit. The whole thing is sanded smooth and then to make it nice and metallic, I'm not gonna paint this, I'm gonna use some aluminium foil tape. Just make sure you get it on there without any creases, otherwise that will spoil the look. So take your time. So once I've got it laid down flat, I then used my fingers to wrap that around the edges. And then when the whole thing's covered, I used a piece of foam as like a squeegee to get that nice and smooth. And obviously you've got to do that to both sides. The last thing to do is to cut out a couple of small tiny pieces of foam to plug in the ends there. And then I use some hot glue, almost like a filler, to get that nice and flat. I use a really sharp knife to trim that flat too. And then you just need a tiny bit more silver paint to hide that. And here it is all finished, one completed Blades Sword, or Sword of the Daywalker. Turned out pretty cool, I'm impressed with how shiny the blade is there, it looks really metallic as it should do, which is cool, only thing with the blade is it's really delicate, that foil tape, um, it won't take to hitting things with it or anything, you couldn't even make a, a sheath and whoosh it out because you'll just tear the crap out of it. Which is okay because I only intend on putting this on the wooden stand I made. Um, the handle turned out pretty cool too. All of those rings around it there are fairly straight which is surprising considering I just eyeballed them all. Didn't measure any distances between them or anything really. Um, so yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool. I'm now going to show you some close up shots of this which might help you when you come to make your own. So there you go, one com two completed swords, because I'm a stupid idiot. But whatever, I think it would have been cooler if Blade had two swords like Deadpool and dual wielded them. He probably could have sliced up twice as many vampires, couldn't he? You know, work smarter, not harder, that sort of thing. Maybe I should take my own advice, really. Work smarter, not harder, and only make one of everything and not screw up the video first time round. But let's not talk about that. 
So yeah, that's it for this video. Make sure you've uh, subscribed and hit the notification bell. Checked out social media links to the description of this video. Checked out my Patreon, blah, blah, blah. All that other stuff that I say at the end of every video because in doing so really helps me and helps me make more of these cool videos. Speaking of cool videos, the next one is going to be Blade's Gun because why not? It'll go really cool displayed with the sword, I think. So yeah, Blade's Gun is going to be next. It's based on a Mac 11 with a bit added to the front, so it's a fairly straightforward, boxy design. I've already made the template. It's going to be really easy to do, and I'm going to start making and filming that tomorrow. So the video should be up in about a week, um, provided, of course, that I film it all correctly. Um, so yeah, that's it for this video. Uh, and remember, you don't have to be great at making to make something great. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.